auspicious evening, highly auspicious, the evening twilight, the time for the worship of the Divine, which is going on everywhere in all the worlds. There are worlds and worlds. There are different beings of different levels of consciousness. And we have separate names for them in our Puranas. Now this is one time, this auspicious evening twilight, meant for the worship of the Divine, the Divine only. So all those people who are inclined towards God, would engage themselves busily in the worship of God. And now, whatever sadhana we do will bear enormous fruit, very conducive for worship. But you know what the asuras would do. Whoever takes food, in the time of this evening twilight or in the morning twilight. It is a Suri quality. And whoever sleeps, sleeps away the auspicious evening twilight and the auspicious morning twilight, which many, many do. People sleep till about seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning. It will increase our Asuri qualities, the inclination towards food and sleep and the pleasures of the world would be on the increase because you are imitating the Asuras, the Rakshasas, without knowing when that is meant to be the time for worship of the Divine, we engage in eating and sleeping and making merry. So let us remember this, if possible, and adhere to the habit of chanting the Name, both in the early morning hours and in the evening hours, knowing that every Nama that you chant would bear 
enormous fruit. Why? Because the devatas, although higher beings, would be engaged in worship and that would create a huge spiritual current everywhere and that would add up to our own worship. So let us be very, very grateful, offer our grateful pranams for this auspicious blessing and submit our Nama flowers at the lotus feet of Bhagwan. Now yesterday we saw, we try to understand the statement of Bhagwan, the saying of Bhagwan, whatever happens, happens by the will of God alone. Whatever happens is perfect and whatever happens is grace. And in another saying, Bhagwan goes one step ahead and says, He said it to me, Devki, wherever Father places this beggar and Devki, we have not only to accept it as a blessing from God, but be grateful to Him for it. This is one step ahead. Even to reconcile to the happening, if it happens to be negative, as a blessing would be very difficult for ordinary people to consider something negative as something of a blessing from God is very difficult unless you have prepared your mind for that. And what to say if Bhagavan says that you should be grateful to God for it. Now let's see what he means by this. Now, after my explanation yesterday, another devotee has raised to this question, will you please explain to us again how everything can be perfect? When we see with our eyes, hear with our ears, what is happening all around, in the whole world, you just take Afghanistan, what a terrible thing that's happening there. We shudder even to think about it, the way people are so scared that they would be shot to death at any moment and they would run in panic. Here and there, even falling, the planes. How can you accept it as something perfect? What does he mean? What does Bhagwan mean by saying that whatever happens is perfect? A very good question and Bhagwan's statement has to be understood properly. Now, we must start from the beginning for that, that Bhagavan has also said, My Father alone exists, there is nothing else, no one else. And at times He would say, I alone exist, I am the cosmic controller, I run the whole cosmos. I have come in all these forms, Everything that happens in this world is a leela of God. This is what Bhagwan was saying. In fact, there was an atheist who had come to visit Bhagwan. He wouldn't prostrate. He just talked to him very casually, and Bhagwan responded beautifully. It just didn't matter to Bhagwan that the man, the other man, would not 
allot any divinity to Bhagwan at all. Bhagwan gave respect to him, answered. And then Bhagwan, after he left, Bhagwan said, You know, it is my father in this form, my father's Leela. The questions that he asked, the non belief in God, all this is only Leela of father because it's my. The atheist himself is a form of my father. It's my father who has taken all these forms and playing these roles as Leelas. If you understand the secret behind it, if you begin to see what it means, then you will not be affected by the happenings of life. When you watch a movie and when you see the fights, the deaths, the cruelties, you watch with more interest sitting on the edge of the chair. And you know how the movie is talked about, it becomes viral, one of the best movies. So you see, this is what is happening in the world, but we are unable to watch this as a world show because we get involved. Because of our involvement, commitment to this world, we become part of this world and we are not able to see it as an object, it becomes part of our subject. Now, how can we justify the statement. It's not justification. We can only say how to understand this true statement because the statement is true. Now, I shall try to give an example. God is running the whole world, generation after generation after generation, by the law of karma. That is the law that rules the entire creation. So what happens, you take up the case, the extreme case of an innocent man being hanged, blamed as a cold-blooded murderer and hanged by the law of human beings, by the law of mankind, when somebody proves, when all the evidences prove that the man may be truly innocent, he might not know anything about it, but he could be easily framed by very influential people just to escape from the law. Even verdict can be bought with sufficient money because it's Kali Yuga. We do not know how things happen, but we know sometimes an innocent man is framed and hanged for the crime of someone else. How can you say this is perfect? How can you say this is grace? Yogi Ram Kumar Bhagwan says, Whatever happens is perfect. It happens by, by my father's will and it is grace. Now, we all know the justice that happens from the eyes of the mankind. But there is a justice behind all this, what we call the divine justice. Now, the human mind being what it is, very limited in its perception, in its knowledge, it knows only a fragment of life. Whatever the evidences prove, only that would be known to the judge. He does not have jnana drishti, he does, does not have the inner eye 
to see what really happened. Even if he knows the truth, he has to go only by the evidence submitted in the court. In that sense, he is powerless, he has to go by the rule. Now the evidences can be arranged by very influential people. This weakness is there in the law of humanity, but the Divine Divine, the knowledge of the Divine is not fragmented like ours. The Divine knows right from your first birth and the several thousand births that you have already taken and what you have committed, the good as well as the bad acts. And the Divine is designing your life according to its law of karma, according to your past karmas, be it good or bad. Everybody's life is designed by the Divine. Even when you are born into the world, you are born with the blueprint of your life. You may believe it or not, it's your problem. But the truth is this, it cannot be proved. How can the subtleties be proved? But for a pure mind, a pure mind will be able to grasp the truth of any knowledge quickly, without much trouble. They don't use the intelligence, they use the intuition. Intuition is higher than intelligence. Now, suppose the innocent man who has been hanged on false charges, he would have been a cold-blooded murderer in his previous birth and he would have trapped somebody, some innocent man, just to escape the law, he would have framed charges against an innocent man, he would have committed this added crime, an innocent man would have died because of him. Now just imagine the family of the innocent man, the relatives, friends, and the torture the innocent man has to go through, knowing that he has not done anything at all to deserve this. Now this torture, this hell, has to be gone through by the one who commits it. He cannot escape the eye of the Divine. He, this piece of knowledge would be absent to us, but the Divine knows. No detail can ever escape the attention of the Divine. There, are, there is hierarchy, we wouldn't go into all those details. There are devatas who are left in charge of certain aspects of life. There is a superlative computer which keeps up the accounts of all the creatures, which include even animals, the plants, the stone, all life. So our accounts are all there. Bhagwan used to say there is an invisible cosmic register where every creature's account is maintained. You may think while committing a crime that nobody has seen it and you could frame some other man, but no that the watchful eye of the Divine is there, noting down immediately and it's going, the act is going into your account. One day it will be settled by the Divine. With such order and precision, 
Now you tell me, the innocent man who has been hanged in this birth, because of the crime he committed in his last birth, the knowledge of which is well known to the Divine, the Divine has designed it. So when Bhagwan says, whatever happens is perfect, there is justice in it. What justice? Divine justice. If the innocent man escapes for the crime, despite the crime that he had committed in his previous birth, then you can say it is not perfect, it's not fair. Everything is fair. In the eye of the Divine. The Divine acts in full knowledge of each one's account, but the Divine does it for our spiritual growth, the evolution. Every suffering that comes to us is meant to push us towards God, because God is the goal of everybody's life. We may not be able to attain God in the usual sense of the word, but we can remember God. So let's say the goal of each one's life is to remember God as much as possible in the circumstances of life. Now, this relentless law of karma is bound to punish do justice to every act, then how to get out of it? Is there a way out of the suffering? Even the criminal commits his crime in ignorance. We cannot say innocence, but we can definitely say ignorance, because he does not know what is involved. He thinks nobody has seen, it could be well covered, and some other man can be framed. Why? He does not know the Divine is watching over and the Divine will surely punish him for this act. Because God has given us the faculty of discrimination, we know what is good, what is bad. Knowing what is good and what is bad, we go against the law, we go against dharma, indulging in acts of adharma. So how shall we be corrected? And these corrections, so are the happenings, the negative happenings of life. Every negative happening is a correction by the Divine. It's meant for your transformation, it's meant for your spiritual growth. How? You will know when you go through it the torture that you go through, the torture that you gave to somebody. I have taken up the extreme case in order to explain this. Even simple acts, you know, so many people come and say, you see, so many bridegrooms, you know, prospective men come and see my daughter, but then you see it's getting delayed. It comes up to the marriage and then people back out, it's not happening, it's now two years, three years, why? This lady would have done that to people in her last birth. She would have given this mental torture to so many people that she finally has to go through the experience herself. Same with the bridegroom. He is unable to get a bride because he would have rejected many of them in his previous birth, giving them suffering, and now it is their turn to reject him. Everything, everything is justified. Everything happens according to the Divine justice. 
The divine justice is based upon the subtleties. It is based upon the complete knowledge of many births, whereas we know only this birth, we have fragmented knowledge. So this is how the Divine Justice works, and in that sense, everything gets even, everything gets settled, every score is settled. So how do we escape from this? I do an action, and if I do it thinking that I am doing it, I am the doer, I am doing it, then I have to face the consequences, be it good or bad, both. If I think that I am only an instrument in the hands of the Divine, the Divine is doing it through me, I am only a machine, Bhagwan used to say, referred to himself as a machine. He would say, Father says, this machine works well, to the satisfaction of Father. So if you understand that you are only an instrument, and then every action is getting done through you by the Divine, then the consequences are also the Divine, it goes to the Divine. You don't have to face them. As long as you think that you are the only doer, you are the doer of your actions, you have to face the consequences. But if I practice this bhava, this attitude, that I am only an instrument in the hands of the Divine, and the Divine is getting done, all the works that I do, be it good or bad, if I commit mistakes, it is by the will of the Divine that this has happened through this instrument. This humble attitude, remembering, so when you do that, you remember, when you do an action, you remember, the Divine is doing it through you, so you are remembering the Divine, you are remembering God, it is tapas. This is the only way, giving up the doership is the only way to escape from the law of karma, relentless law of karma. And that is why Bhagwan said, keep chanting the name, the name and the named are one and the same. Nami lives in the Nama, in complete fullness. So when you chant the name, you remember God, and God's power and grace will start working through the Name, why God lives in the Name. And then Bhagwan says, you practice this attitude that you are only an instrument in the hands of God, hand over the doership to God, don't own up anything. The minute you own up the action, you will have to own up the consequences as well. So give up the sense of doership, keep chanting the Name all the time, or as much as possible, the rest will be seen by God. This is what has been advised by the great Masters, to escape this unforgiving law of karma. It goes to the good karmas also, when I do a good turn to somebody, there will be someone getting ready to do the same good turn to Me. So if you want to attain the state of nirvana, you have to go beyond both, beyond the pairs of opposites. So now we know, whatever happens, happens by the Divine, by the design of the Divine Will deliberately, purposely. And so whatever happens is what we deserve, the good as well as the bad. So when you begin to wonder, why is this happening to Me alone? 
all the sufferings, not to this neighbour, this side or that side, or the people in the opposite house. Why me? Why me alone? Because you have come with that set of karmas, of your own choice. God has given you the sense of discrimination, and despite discrimination, we have not only committed the crime, we have wound it up. So we have to face, each one has to face a certain design of the consequences as willed by God. But God being God, all kindness and compassion, when you go through the karma phala, when you go through the effect of your karma, be it good or bad, He puts a lot of blessing also in that. So the great Master's advice is that when an adversity comes to you in life, know that you are paying back for the bad karma that you have done, at the same time it's a blessing for God in truth, and if you recognize it, it will show itself to be a blessing. It will prove itself to be a blessing. You will know soon enough how it is a blessing, how it has changed your attitude to life, how it has changed your mindset. So we have to remember this knowledge, which all those great people have said. Bhagavan said, in the state of nirvana, in the state of fullness, you will only see God in everything, you will only see God's blessing, you will only see God's leelas in every happening of life. But then it's very difficult to get to that state. So what does Bhagwan, Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar advise? He says, you attach yourself to a man who has attained the state of nirvana and start doing Guru Seva, whatever action. You, everyone cannot be near the Guru and serve. It's very difficult to get unless it is meant for you. But everyone is living his life and there are actions and actions and actions, everyday life. So whatever action comes to you, you do it in the bhava, in the attitude of service to the Guru. This attitude of service to the Guru will take away the sense of doership from you and the Guru becomes responsible for all your actions and He will take you in no time to the highest state. This is the way out of this labyrinth of life's vicissitudes. So let's remember all that Bhagwan has said. So let's learn to look upon all the adversities of life as only blessings from Bhagavan, and we will know soon enough how they are blessings. And by thinking of it as a blessing, you will be able to accept it in a better state of mind, so you will not fall into depression. There will be no tension, no depression, no medicines for lifelong. If you only look upon it as a blessing from God, I do not know what is involved, I do not know how it is a blessing, but I am sure it has come from God because Bhagwan has said so, and it carries a blessing for me. Be very obstinate in this attitude, and you will see soon enough how it turns out to be a blessing for you. The mind it does not easily accept anything that is not a profit to you. We want profit, we want benefit, 
all the time. So you see how God has designed our psychology. Now this Bhagwan, who made this statement, is here right in front of us, ready to give the blessings that you need to cross all the ups and downs of life. And we have to connect with Him somehow or the other, by chanting the Name, by being instrument in His hands, by being building ungood instruments in His hands, offering our very life, offering all our actions to Him as His Seva. Now let's uh, submit our today's prayer.